Hello everybody and welcome to Deutsch Exchange. My name is Joey Mobs. I am the sales manager for the Deutsch Corporation Remanufactured Engine Division. I'm joined today by Jeff Wolf. He is our marketing director and he's also my cameraman today. So today we're going to take you for a tour of our remanufacturing facility. And one of the biggest messages that we want to get across to you today is the difference between a rebuilt engine and a remanufactured engine. So a rebuilt engine is typically taken down to the point of failure. And once the rebuilder gets to that point, they build the engine back up using the same components that they've taken off. And typically using the aftermarket parts to replace the damaged parts. A remanufactured engine, a Deutsch remanufactured engine, is taken completely down to the bare part. Those parts are cleaned thoroughly, machined if necessary, and inspected to make sure that they meet brand new standards. Now once it meets brand new standards, it's taken and put, being put on the shelf and into our inventory. So when it comes time to order your engine, what we do is we take the engine serial number that you provide and we pull the parts to build your engine. So behind me here, we have the disassembly area. This is a big part of our process and we've actually put in a lot of investment into building this up this year in 2020. Now it's very loud in this area, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you a little video of the disassembly process and I'll talk you through a couple of things while we do. Let's go over here. So part of the remanufacturing process is turning in a core. We have to turn in a core to be compliant with the EPA. And when you turn in your core, Deutsch Corporation or Deutsch Exchange is not like other rebuilding companies or remanufacturing companies. We actually allow you 12 months to turn, turn in your core to get full core credit. Now once we receive your core, we will need to make sure that it passes a few of our inspection criteria. Number one, the crankshaft has to turn 360 degrees. Number two, there cannot be any visible holes in the block. And number three, the engine needs to be relatively complete. As long as you pass that inspection criteria, you'll get full credit for your core. Deutsch Exchange can also make exceptions to repower equipment in the field. For example, if you want to take your non-Deutsch engine and send it to us, we can go ahead and give you a Deutsch engine in place and since we are fully compliant, we will go ahead and take care of the paperwork for you. Now what you're looking at here is the pass-through machine. And the pass-through machine, what happens is once we get it down to the bare parts, the parts are separated. Internal parts and 5C parts. Our 5C parts are going to be our crankshaft, our camshaft, our connecting rod, our cylinder head, and our crankcase. The internal parts are going to go into different various machines like the pass-through which shoots a caustic slurry, the shot tank right there that shoots little pieces of shot at the components, and then we also have soda blasting machines and if we need more cleaning we can actually use a wire wheel. Now later on in the tour we're going to show you how clean the components get in this process. Now because Deutsch Exchange engines only use genuine parts and because our process for building these engines are consistent with, with the way that Deutsch AG builds new engines, we are allowed to give it an industry leading three year transferable warranty or same as new. So you get all of the German engineering and made right here in America. So what you're looking at now is the ultrasonics tank. We just added that this year. So it's going to use a combination of chemistry and ultrasonics to get these parts very clean.
right, so now we're at the end of our disassembly area. The components have been separated from 5C components and internal components. The internal components are going to go in that direction over there to be inspected, and the 5C components is where we're going to start our tour. Now I brought in a couple of core engines here for you to see, just so you can see the before and after effect of our remanufacturing process. So the first machine that our cores, our core 5C parts are going to encounter is going to be our radial arm here. So the radial arm, over time, as you can imagine, bolts break, bolts get stuck, bolts get seized. This machine right here is going to take care of that for us on our crankcases. Once they pass the radial arm, we're going to go to our first Haas CNC machine here. Now this first machine is going to take care of most of our legacy engines. So that's going to be our air-cooled 914s, 912s, 1012s, 2012 engines. Once the engine is passed and got resurfaced by our Haas machine here, it's going to encounter our honing machine. Now our first honing machine here is going to take care of all engines tier 3 and below. So that's tier 3, tier 2, tier 1, and even some tier 0 engines. Now if we want to make an engine tier 4 compliant, we have to use a different uh, honing machine, and that's going to be our helical slide honing machine, which is right here behind me. The helical slide honing machine is going to be necessary for all tier 4 engines, and it's a compliance thing. So if you're a rebuilder or the reman company that you're buying your Deutsch tier 4 engine doesn't have one of these machines, luckily it's not going to be in compliance. Our second Haas machine over here is going to be used for our high runners. So this is going to be most of our sub 4 liter machines, or sub 4 liter engines, 2011s, 1011s, things of that nature. So we're going to resurface the deck surfaces, take off any type of surface roughness, and once everything is machined and the engine is inspected to make sure that it meets new standards, we give it a part number just like here, and we put it into our supermarket. Now if a component doesn't meet new standards, and because we are the manufacturer, we have all the necessary documentation and original documentation to tell us what is uh, new standards, and if it doesn't meet new standards, we toss it into trash. So now that we're done with the crankcases, we're going to go over here to the heads. Same thing with the crankcases. All of our heads are going to be removed, stripped down to the bare components, where it's going to be cleaned thoroughly, it's going to be machined and surfaced the way it needs to be. And as long as it meets new standards, we're going to give it a part number and stick it into our supermarket just like the crankcase. So now we're going to move over here, start getting into the internal components and start out with connecting rods. So the first thing that we do here in the connecting rod station is, first of all, we make sure it's a Deutz component. Over the years, as these older engines come in here and people rebuild them, sometimes we find that they use aftermarket parts. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this connecting rod, make sure it's a Deutz component. We're going to change the bushing right here, and we're going to make sure that it gets machined to new specifications. Now once it's inspected and everything is new specifications, we give it a part number and we stick it into stock. 
So let's go over here and check out the crank uh, shafts. So over here in our crankshaft area, same thing as all parts, everything is inspected to make sure it meets new standards. If we can oversize the crankshaft, according to what Deutz AG tells us that we're allowed to do, typically about 0.25 or 0.5 millimeter, and still be within new standards, that's what we'll do. Every crankshaft goes through our Magnaflux machine here to inspect it for cracks. We check it for straightness. And then if we need to go over a little bit, we will. Again, once it's inspected, meets new standards, it's given a part number. Right here. And it's put into our stop. We'll come over here. Here's one of our crankshaft machines here. Polishing it back down or grinding it back down to spec. Now, once John's finished dealing with it here, he's going to inspect it to make sure it meets new standards and again give it a part number. We have some more crankshaft polishing going on right here. And in the same area, we're also going to do camshafts. So again, because we are the manufacturer, we know everything about this part. We know what it looks like, we know how heavy it is, we know what the part number is supposed to be, and also we know the specifications that we can take it to and still meet new standards. So that really concludes our 5C components. Now we're going to start working on our internal components and we're going to start out with the Heinzman governors. So remanufacturing Heinzman governors is one of the things that we do, but one thing that we do differently is we never reuse internal components. So we use the outer shell of the governor and this is what it starts out to look like when it first comes to us. So our disassembly and cleaning process does a really, really outstanding job cleaning these components. So we take the bare shell of the used governor and we fill it with brand new components. Once we are finished, we take it over here to our calibration cabinet and all of our governors are set to your customer specifications. In 2011, governors, we're going to do the same. Again, the cleaning process gets it very, very clean. We're going to take the used governor shell and we're going to fill it with new components. Not only internal governor components, but our books exchange engines, we never take a chance with components like starters, injectors, injector pumps. Okay, we always use those new, and because we do that, we can maintain a very, very low failure rate. Usually below 2% failure rate is what we experience here at, uh, from our products. So here at the internal components or internal parts inspection, again, we are the manufacturer. So we are gonna have all the information necessary to make sure that this is a Deutz part, 
and we're going to make sure that it is new standards. And if it doesn't meet new standards, then we toss it into trash. So we know what this thing weighs, we know what it looks like, we know where every little mark is supposed to be, and all of our parts are meticulously inspected to ensure this. Again, if it doesn't meet our standards, it goes in the trash. So now that we're done doing internal inspection, we're going to get into the assembly process. In order to do that, we're going to go to our assembly staging area. So what you're seeing over here on the right is going to be uh, part of our supermarket. So I'm sure everybody is wondering why I'm using the term supermarket. Well, the reason why we say that is because at this point in time, your customer, the distribution customer, has ordered their engine by giving us their serial number. We've coated, we've coated the engine, and they've paid for the engine to be built. So now it's time for our parts pullers to take their shopping cart here and go through our supermarket and pull all the parts necessary to build your engine. Now, each one of these carts are designed to hold a complete engine. Once they are finished pulling all the parts, it goes up here to the line to get ready to be built. So here we are, we're at a cart that's fully dressed or fully ready to be built. And you'll notice that behind it, we have another cart. So Deutsch Exchange, we build two types of products. We build an XE product and an XED product. The XED product is going to be a completely engine, uh, fully dynoed, 100% exactly sure fit into your OEM's components or OEM's machine. So if it's going to be an XED product, it's going to include things like the flywheel and the starter and the bell housing, things of that nature. The XE product is going to be the same product, but it's going to be missing the flywheel. It's going to be missing the bell housing. It's going to be missing the starter and other electrical components. Now you can see from this cart right here, we have a mixture of new and used components. Again, here's some of our injection components. We never take a chance with those. Those are always new. We have a used governor shell here. Internal parts are new. We have a used head up here. Everything's ready to go. So let's head over here to our assembly line. So our assembly line is broken down into two sections. We have our A line and then we have our B line. Our A line is going to take care of sub 4 liter engines, things like the 2.9, the 2011, the 1011F, smaller engines. Our B line is going to take care of larger engines and legacy engines like the 914, the 1012, the 2012. So the way that our assembly line is set up is we have stations. Each station is responsible for doing a certain piece of that one engine going down the line. So here we have the engine mounted. This section right here is going to do 10 to 12 steps and then it's going to move on to the next station. So our next station right here, we're going to be tightening down the mains. We have our large radial arm machine here that comes back and tightens down these components to spec. All of our tools hanging from the rafters here are all calibrated weekly to ensure that we are precise with all of our measurements and our tightening specs. So what we use here on our assembly line is we use the Kanban system or the two basket system. So a worker comes by here and they see the quantity and the part number and if there's only one basket there and it's sitting up here, the worker is going to come by and fill this up to the right quantity 
and supply our line. This way we never run out of components and we never run out of parts to put on engines. So at the last station here, the very last thing that this engine is going to get is get put into time. Once timing is established on this engine, all of our engines are put onto dyno carts, like the one you see here. And from here you can see that it's a mixture of new and used parts. Used valve cover, brand new injection components. Now because we used your failed engine serial number, every engine that we build for you is going to be an exact clone of the engine that you were requesting. Now because we're the manufacturer and we have all the documentation, that means that the engine that we build for you also has to pass all the tests that your original engine did back in the day. So over here at our dyno room, based on your engine serial number, your engines are going to have to pass all the tests that your original did. So along with passing high load and low load, there's also a number of other tests that your engine is going to have to pass. Again, based on your original engine serial number, the engine that we put on the dyno today will have to pass the same test. This is another reason why we're able to give it a three year transferable warranty or same as new warranty. So once your engine is finished being dynoed, if it's going to be an XED product or a dress product, it's going to get dressed right over here. After the engine is dressed, all of our engines are going to take a bath in our washroom here. And then it's off to paint. Now all Deutsch Exchange remanufactured engines are going to get a unique serial number. So any engine serial number that you see starting with a 215 means it was produced right here in Pendergrass, Georgia. So this machine right here is going to make sure that we have all, all our labeling is going to be correct and compliant. Sometimes we ship out of the country. Now once your engine is painted, it's going to come right over here. Here's a finished product. You can't tell what component is new, what component is used. This engine right here is going to come with a three-year transferable warranty. Looks real good. It's sure fit, guaranteed, all genuine parts. And this particular one that you're looking at right now is going to be an XE model. Notice how it does not have a flywheel or bell housing connected to it. Whereas this one right here is an XED. And you can see it has the bell housing, the flywheel, and the starter on the other side. Here at Deutsch Exchange, we try to keep all of our high movers in stock so that our lead times are low.
So here's some of our finished products here, ready to go out to the field, ready to work. If you have any questions or you want to get a quotation on a Deutsch Exchange engine, you can contact your local distributor. If you don't know who your local Deutsch distributor is, you can go to www.deutschamericas.com and go to the service locator. You can also contact us direct at info.usa at deutsch.com. Thanks for joining me, and I'll take a look at your questions later and see if I can answer them for you.